to make autonomy safe and make it for every car in the world, we had to come up with a completely new approach. Hello, welcome to Talking Autonomy. Today I'm joined by Volkmar Ulig, our CTO and co-founder here at Ghost. In our last episode, we talked a little bit about the traditional robotics-based approach that this industry has largely taken. There's one other big tenet that's very consistent across many competitors around how they do vision-based perception and those AI algorithms that underlie that that are very much based upon image recognition. And so today we want to talk a little bit more about the challenges of image recognition and why it's been so hard for the industry to solve what's often called the long tail problem. So Volkmar, tell us a little bit about how traditional image recognition works and you know, what is this long tail? So typically when image recognition algorithms are built, uh, we are taking samples of all the things we want to, discover, uh, we want to be able to see, uh, and then we train a neural network. And uh, the neural network then memorizes the patterns it sees in the picture. So this is the classic, just if you put hundreds of thousands of pictures of cars, trucks, buses, people, everything that might be on the road in front of a computer, it eventually learns into the network what all that stuff is so it can detect it in the real world. Correct. It just memorizes how they look like. Okay. So the big challenge with that memorization is you need to show it all the combinations. And not only that, the neural network uh, can learn the different sizes. Mm. So if you show it a small truck and a big truck, uh, from the neural network perspective, that is a completely different truck. Mm. And it's also more complex because not only do you have different stuff that might be on the road, but they might look different at different times of day, when it's slightly raining, when it's yeah. foggy, if it's turned this way versus that way, if it's red versus gray versus black. Correct. So the only thing where the network is really good at is it doesn't matter where on the picture it mm. is, but if you are rotating it, then that's a different object. And if you change the size, that's a different object as well. So this is exactly why you see some vendors talking about how they've built newer and bigger supercomputers. So they have, you know, just, uh, you know, petabytes upon petabytes of training data yeah. to be able to show, you know, what used to be hundreds of thousands of images. Now you hear millions of images, billions of images. Mm -hmm. it just seems to be spiraling out of control to try to get there. Yeah. And so the, the more pictures you are putting into the system, uh, the more fragile the system becomes because at some point everything looks the same. Mm. Uh, and so it becomes very hard for the neural network to discriminate. Um, like, you know, if you have something which is in rain, uh, really foggy, uh, and that should still be a car, how, even as a human, how do you make that out? It's, mm. uh, it's a very error prone uh, system and it's very fragile. Yeah, I mean, so one of the, the challenges, if I understand what you're saying, is that things that are common start to dwarf out things that are really uncommon. And so it's really hard to get the network to understand or focus on, on things that aren't seen very often. Yeah, so this is in general the problem. So how do you uh, homogenize your data set so that the network puts even weight on all the objects you want and not just says, okay, I know exactly how a car looks like and that's the car which is 10 meters away from me uh, because that's the most common cars I'm seeing. Right. Uh, you want to have all the corner cases and you want to then uh, make a statement about how accurately can you detect all the corner cases in all weather and all lighting conditions. Mm -hmm. And that's where the long tail comes in. And typically we are not observing that long tail very often. Right. Here, it's never raining, uh, so what do you do? Well, you, you don't have a lot of rain days, right. uh, so you don't have a lot of rain examples. Now you can find other places, but that's only true for, let's say, weather and lighting. But then there are all these corner cases which are very hard to do. I mean, isn't there just an infinity problem here as well? At the end of the day, like, I don't know what the popular Halloween costume of next year might be. And yes. so when it arrives uh, crossing the road one day, I've probably never seen it before. Yeah, and we, we have seen that. Uh, there were uh, self-driving car companies who took their cars to Australia and the car or the neural network never saw a kangaroo and suddenly was confused. Mm. Uh, and that is the long tail problem. So I, we believe that image recognition is, is very powerful if you want to make a specific uh, decision that if there is a, a, an object type which we care about, let's say a fire truck or a police car, um, then we want to know that. Uh, and we can make decisions based off that extra knowledge. Uh, but I can always make a new object. Uh, and that new object you may have never seen. And so from the perspective of the neural network, it doesn't exist because mm -hmm. it cannot classify it. Wow. So there is 
an underlying phenomenon uh, which we need to detect, which is the presence of an object. And then there is the object recognition, which says, oh, I now know what that specific type is if I want to make a decision of that. So, so if I understood that correctly, you know, it, it, this isn't just about misrecognizing things where I might think, hey, that was a bus instead of a truck or something like that. There are situations where if the system doesn't recognize it as something it cares about, it'll just ignore it. Correct. Wow. That's the whole idea of classification. Wow. So what, what's the danger here? I mean, if, if we miss a recognition on the road in, in traditional systems, what can happen? So there are, I think, two critical parts. So one is the object disappears. So there's something present and we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And if you make a decision based on the presence of the object, um, which is suddenly wiped off the scene, then we think we have an open road. Mm. And that's a, obviously a problem because I may drive into, into things which, which are there and I'm not seeing them. So one example I remember from the popular media was a, a car that unfortunately ran into a semi-truck that had been turned over. And that's probably a great example of a, of a time when perhaps the AI wasn't trained on what the bottom of a semi-truck looked like. Correct. And similarly, like we don't see semi-trucks that often, uh, which are turned over, and so usually they're not in training set. And but there are other cases where stuff falls off the back of a truck. Like you know, I've seen Christmas trees laying on the on the road, and then if you have never trained a Christmas tree, the road is free. So obviously, that you know, I missed an object recognition. We crash into something is kind of the worst case scenario. Yeah. But there's other challenges as well, right? Like yeah. what if I um, think something was a big truck and it was a medium tr sized truck instead? Yeah. So the in many cases, um, the size of the object is used to calculate the distance. Mm. So if you know cars are typically like two meters wide, and so we are saying, well, if I see a car, then I take the, the pixel width and then I can calculate the distance if I don't have uh, an, an alternative sensor to do that measurement. And so if I'm miscategorizing, let's say, a motorcycle as a car or a car as a motorcycle or any of those combinations, suddenly the object jumps in, in distance. Uh, the other problem is we are also, uh, in, in the standard robotics approach, usually you have tracking of objects as they evolve over time and where the location is so that you can then infer a velocity. And so let's say an object would be recognized. There was a case where um, a person pushing a bicycle, the recognition would flip between person and bicycle. And so now when you're establishing that correspondence, uh, effectively every time the classification would switch a, a new thread of, of uh, object presence would be created. And so that object was untraceable. And so if you have missed detections, um, there are, I mean, lots of funny YouTube videos on people falling down, becoming a bear, and, mm. you know, bicycles not being correctly detected, or a bicycle being attached on the back of a car being detected as a bicycle, despite it's a car driving. So you get all these weird corner cases, uh, which are very hard uh, to disambiguate. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, so if I add all this up, um, fundamentally image-based AI and image recognition, it's obviously a super valuable technology, but I think one of our beliefs at Ghost was this just couldn't be the foundational thing we drove upon. You know, to, to be able to, to reason about with certainty that there was always 100% safety with this technology seemed very difficult. And it led you and, and your co-founder John to really think about a completely different approach to AI. Is that, is that a good summary of it? That's a very good summary, yes. Awesome. Well, stay tuned for future episodes where we'll get much deeper into that unique approach to AI that's more universal and doesn't rely on object recognition. Thank you.